Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we are going to be talking AMD and their latest uh, additions to the RDNA 3 stack. Now what I do want to say straight off the back is I do have an MBA made by AMD 7800 XT. There is not going to be an MBA 7700 so I've had to rely on the aftermarket brands to uh, bring the coolness to the table. Now, as far as I'm concerned and as far as I can see from the experience looking at your comments is when it comes to AMD, your preferences with branding is slightly different to your preferences if it was from the green team. The two names always seem to come up very strong, a Sapphire and XFX. And thankfully, they were the ones that wanted to send me cards nice and early. So that all kind of fell into place rather lovely. Now I've got the big fat daddy Nitro Plus Overclock Super Duper 7800 XT from uh, Sapphire. I don't have any prices at the time of filming. This is literally the end of the day, the day before the NDA. I don't have prices from them yet. So uh, I may add it in the um, description underneath, but at the time, I just don't know. Uh, then I've got the Nitro, uh, sorry, then I've got the Pure 7700 XT there. That arrived today, so I've not been able to test it yet. There just isn't enough time when I've got to do videos and write-ups and pictures and all of that stuff. But it is there. It's all white. It's got a lovely red bit on it. I already like the look of it. It's a beautiful card. They are doing a 7800 version as well, but that one's just there to look pretty and to show you that I will be reviewing that shortly. Then I have a Merck 319 XT from XFX and the Quick 319 XT from XFX. So this is the only 7700 XT that you're going to see in the graphs. But other than that, you've got three 7800s and one of them being the MBA model. If with the MBA model, uh, if you see other brands with the reference model, that's pretty much what you're going to be buying with a different skirt on. Now I have had to write notes because I am not a robot and I don't do scripts because at the end of the day I just want to talk to you like I'm a mate and we're having a chat in the pub. Now uh, the main pricing from AMD that I've got for the 7800 uh, XT is 479. We obviously don't know how much the Sapphire is going to be but the uh, XFX model is going to be 539. We do need to remember that the Merc 319 is their top of the range model. I'm going to assume that Sapphire is going to come in around and about to that anyway. And the 7700, again, this is going to be their top flight 7700. There will be cheaper models, but this one's going to come in at 469. So it's £10 cheaper than an MBA 4800. Now you've probably been and had a look and seen or heard or looked at the rumours of all the stuff that's coming out anyway. And basically the 7700 comes with 12 gigabyte of VRAM, 192 bits of memory bandwidth, whereas the 78 is 256 and has 16 gigabyte. Then it all comes down to uh, memory bandwidth, speeds and that sort of stuff, which I'll pop up a big graph for you anyway. But the main difference between the two with power draw is 245 watts and 263 watts. Now with power draw you can see the graph pop up and if you look carefully you can see the older models in the graph as well. Now we retested everything just recently so all of these results are in like on it they're, they're really not that old. We can't retest these for every review because it takes weeks to do all of those. But the thing to kind of see here is that the newer ones, the, 70, the 7000 series versus the 6000 series is pulling less power. Uh, we'll go straight into temps and you have to look at the bottom of the graph to see the uh, aftermarket models because the temps are all ridic. The Sapphire specifically is just sat there twiddling its thumbs at like 50 something degrees. It is silly. And I genuinely do mean it is silly. Like wow, did they get that sorted out. There's definitely some headroom there if you get lucky with the silicon lottery. Um, temperatures and power draw, good. When we start to look at uh, results though, 
the best way that I can differentiate between the two is the 7700 is definitely better in the 1080p results. But when we move on to 1440, it will fall a couple of places compared to some of the other cards with more memory bandwidth or just more memory. Uh, although we weren't hitting memory limitations, so it is more than likely just going to be a memory bandwidth thing. But what I was cons uh, consistently surprised with with these is a the 6800 people were saying there were rumors that it was the, that they were going to be you know in front of that they trade places a lot with the 6800 and the 6800 xt and you will need to dissect the graphs to be able to see where that lies but the bit that surprised me more than anything is the competition against the green team consistently performance wise was about on point with a 3080 now I know a lot of you are going to say and moan that I'm comparing it to last gen's 3080 but that was still a big card uh, and uh, had a fairly large price tag as well so yes it's last gen this gen they're coming in around and can beat the 4070 now there was a lot of chatter about them being sort of competition with the 4060 and the 4060 Ti. Now, Nvidia are going to ring me up and they're going to be like, ah, we well, didn't say anything about the 4060 16 gigabyte. Well, I've not tested one, so I'm not going to uh, because I want to keep it about the results that I have and we need to keep things on track. But as far as the greens are concerned, when it comes to 4060, they do have things to say when it comes to the DLSS 3 and the performance with the frame generation and stuff like that. Now I'm not instantly going to start talking to you about oh well FSR 3 is coming because it's not here yet and we need to test it before we see it but it is coming. But the one thing I would like to do is to point you towards the DLSS results and then look for the FSR results because whatever games we've got that we could test FSR we have tested both with FSR off for the you know the normal results that at one point all the AMD fanboys wanted their cards compared to the Nvidia cards like it but where FSR is uh, available we've obviously turned it on run the test again and it's very strong to the point where it does get in there and trade punches with the DLSS maybe not frame generation but definitely with the DLSS results and that is a very strong thing to talk about uh, and it's something that would be nice to see get more mature and more of the um, uh, game developers start working with that more closely because where it does work and there are several games where it does F1 2022 is one of them um, it is very strong now you're going to say why didn't you test F1 2023 where we're waiting for a patch because the launch stuff it didn't have a lot of things on it and where we have to test every single card to kick start the graphs it's not a short process and uh, when we do it we want to make sure that the FSR is working and the DLSS is working so that things are fair across the pack because we just don't have days on end to keep going back and retesting those things but where FSR 2 2.1 worked, it worked exceptionally well. So in reality, uh, this now comes down to my own personal conclusion and my feelings within these as a launch. Now, with the aftermarket ones costing a little bit more money, and you've obviously got the reference ones, the time where a reference card is going to come part of the conclusion and us chatting about uh, whether it's... Uh, you know which way you should swing with a 77 or a 78 have really got to say it's going to come down to price if you were to make me choose between the XFX 77 and then an aftermarket or sorry an MBA uh, maybe not MBA but a reference 78 where the prices are so close I would instantaneously tell you to go for this one unless you do not mind paying that little bit for the aesthetics and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but you do need to remember that if you get one of these as a reference model, it's probably going to have the cheap cooler on it, the cheap backplate. It won't look as nice. There, it will be a fit and forget card. It's not going to be something that you're going to really want to tweak and play around with. It might not be that uh, quiet, for example, either. As these are all consistently ridiculously quiet and ridiculously cool as well. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But if it was me, 
because of the 50 pounds difference and let's say we just go for the prices between uh, like this one and this one they are so very close because these are obviously the prices that we got given I think that one was 469 and that one was 439 you've got a very tough decision to make because at the end of the day they are so very close I would still lean towards the uh, 78 model just because you get that extra memory you get the extra bandwidth it wasn't that long ago we were shouting about uh, VRAM with other uh, brands like with the green team and it didn't have enough and it should have had more and these are so very close AMD have made it very difficult for the vendors to be able to price the between the cards I feel like the 77 models uh, if there was an MBA that it should have been significantly cheaper to make life easy for these guys because the reason why the price is so close on these is just because of the fact you know with what AMD is selling them at and what they can get away with selling you know then reselling them to us with obviously their cards and stuff on uh, the other side of it uh, and I'm going to lose my train of thought, but that I think they make that really difficult. My other side of it, that was where my head was, because I'm trying to remember my mental notes. When the 7900 comes out, we had the XT and the XTX, and I didn't really see the point in the 7900 XT because it was so close to the 7900 XTX. And that's kind of my feeling where I've got with these. Uh, I would have from the 79 range gone with the XTX pay that little bit of extra money and I am with it on this one as well what we do need is for the 7700 models to take a bit of a jump down uh, let's I would like to see uh, 120 150 maybe pounds GBP between the two and that doesn't mean put those ones up it means put these ones down and that's just to help people have a very clear-cut reason on why they're going to be saving money because that well it's just the way that I feel about it I, I think AMD have just made life fairly difficult for you to choose between them this time um, but uh, the best way I can put it is they did say about them being 1440p cards and I have to say the 7800 yes I would agree but if it was me buying the 77 I would be thinking about playing 1080p but with just all the bells and whistles turned up to the nines and throwing everything at it rather than with this one uh, you're obviously like bumping the res up to 1440. I just think this is a more attractive card at the lower res when you look at the graphs that we spoke about earlier so deep breaths uh four cards in the graphs today with another one to come soon it's white it's got a bit of red on it i already love the look at it i really hope that it performs uh as well as if not maybe better than this one uh weirdly out of the 78 the xfx did come up on come out on top uh, more often than it didn't uh, but it, th th if I was to pick between the two the fact that the Nitro looks like the 7900 it's a beautiful card and I love what they do with the RGB down the side of it that would probably be the one that I would swing for overall it's also got uh, uh, an RGB connector on the side it says RGB out but you connect it to your motherboard and then your motherboard it syncs with your motherboard so it's more of an RGB in but it's also got a fan in on it, which means you can plug it into a fan header on your motherboard and then control these GPU vans with your motherboard uh, sensor, the motherboard software, basically, whatever you use to do that. And I actually think that's a really nice touch. And in reality, aesthetics with those little bits of extra bits is the reason why I went with this. But we just have to hope it doesn't come in loads more expensive than the XFX, which in reality they always make beautiful cards and I mean like utterly beautiful cards with the the black overlaying the silver and the XFX logo lighting up white I probably should have done this at the beginning uh, but they are my thoughts please let me know yours underneath congratulations if you got to the end we're going to go back to the good old-fashioned internet cookie if you watched right the way from the beginning to the end but please let me know your thoughts underneath and like, subscribe, comment, do all the algorithm uh, mumbo jumbo for me, and I will thank you with more videos. Tiny Tom Logan out.